Hey guys, Sonny Bryson here, and welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm gonna give you 16 ideas for passive income. And the reason I chose 16 and not just seven or three like other videos out there is because I wanna give you as many ideas as possible. Because in reality, when I first got started, I tried drop shipping, I tried eBay, I tried doing, for example, going to Goodwill, buying things there and selling them. And I also tried my favorite one ever, which was going ahead and flipping phones. My point is, you're gonna try a lot of things to figure out exactly what works and what doesn't work, okay? So do me a favor. If one of these ideas actually goes ahead and clicks in your head, learn everything about it, give it a try. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, try another one or try again with a different perspective. But don't give up because when you give up, that's where things go wrong. And by the way, I gotta be honest here. Passive stuff is pretty cool. And the idea you have about passive is basically, well, I have some money here, I'm gonna use my money, and my money is gonna make me money, and I don't have to put in time. No, everything usually requires some level of time. People that are successful, I worked every day for an entire year. Elon Musk did 100 hours a week for a long time. Warren Buffett spent hours every day reading financial statements. You, on some level, will have to put in the work if you wanna make a lot of money. Then you build a system, and then it becomes a lot more passive. And there is one promise I wanna make you here. There are 16 ideas, they're all different, but one main thing is some of them can make you money this week, some of them can make you money in the long run, and some of them can take a while to actually build up, but can make you a tremendous amount of money. The point is, pick the one that fits you best, try it out, and see exactly how it works. And don't forget, research everything. Research, research, learn, learn, try, try, fail, fail, but that's how you become successful. Now, let's get started, and as always, do me a favor, smash the like button, on top of that also, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get notified, and on top of that also, comment down below any more ideas or things you have already done that you had failure with or success with, because you never know if somebody in the comments has one of those ideas and wants to try it out, and it works for them, potentially, okay? Now, the very first one is actually, going ahead and starting a vending machine business. Now, one of my friends that we talk all the time, we work out together, but we never really talk personal. Today, he got personal with me. He told me, Tommy, I have a vending machine business. I have a total of seven. Each of them makes me run $800 per month, net after everything. And when you think about it, well, you have seven times, well, well, not, let me pause there. $800 per month multiplied by seven, that's around $5,600 after all the cost of having this vending machine. He paid around $2,000 per each, so his startup cost is basically, well, seven times $2,000. And by the way, they have gotten a lot more expensive, but that's $14,000, and it cost him around $200 to refill at least two of them, or $100 each, but the point is, he is making good money by picking good locations. So the idea is, you go on Facebook, you go on Craigslist, you go on the internet, and you just basically find yourself a good vending machine that is good and work in order. You don't need to buy a brand new one with all the cool feature, and the tap pay, and the this, that, blah, blah, blah. Just find yourself a good working condition vending machine and get started in the business if it actually interests you. The most important thing obviously is gonna be, for example, the location and you being good enough to go ahead and fill those vending machines up when they actually run out of product. You see, it's passive because it sells on its own, but it's active because you gotta go back and refill. It becomes only passive if you pay somebody to manage the whole thing for you, and that's different. I'm gonna be investing with my friend pretty soon, but not just yet, I still have other work to actually get done. Number two is starting an ATM business. Now this right here is basically where money becomes your inventory, and the convenience factor is you solving a problem for somebody else and needs cash right away, and you go ahead and you solve that problem right away. A vending machine is expensive, not like $2,000, but also an ATM is just a money vending machine, so you can also go ahead and buy that. You don't need to have a license or anything crazy like that not at all okay so if you want a full video on how to start a atm business look up on youtube atm business tommy bryson i made a video has over a million views and i go into detail even calling someone 
a company that actually sells ATM machines and getting all the information from them to give it to you. But this is a business that's actually pretty good, okay? You put it in a deli, in a supermarket, in a barbershop, in a salon, and then automatically you charge them $150 or $3 or $10. If you put it, for example, in a club, gentlemen clubs, by the way, they do very well. And then boom, you get passive income. But again, active because you still got to go back and refill the machines once all the cash is done. And by the way, I hear this question all the time. Tommy, they put the debit card inside, it spits out cash, but where does my money come in? Well, that money that they take out, it gets taken out from their debit card and sent over to your bank account. So you have the money in your bank account and then they basically take the money in cash and you get to have, for example, the money plus the fee and that's you make a profit. That is the idea, my friends. Now, number three is people hate when I say this, but it's just a fact, okay? YouTube. If you watch YouTubers all the time, you spend hours on YouTube, you know something that other people want to know, why not make a channel about YouTube, okay? Or a channel on YouTube about that topic to try to make you some money and actually get monetized. My advice would be, don't just start a YouTube channel where you talk about, I want to do a cinnamon challenge. Create a business on YouTube. Meaning, for example, search up, how do I get monetized on YouTube? How do I start a YouTube business? How do I basically hack the YouTube algorithm to make the most money? How do I do a niche on YouTube? What do I talk about? How often do I post? Treat it as a business, and that's how you create a business on YouTube. It's not just, I just come on here, I talk random stuff, no. Everything is planned out. There's a whole system. It's very methodical. And if you do become methodical about what you do and you also enjoy it, you will make money from YouTube. It takes a while, but it's worth it. I've been doing this since I was 11 years old and it has been my dream. And now my dream has come into fruition and it feels amazing. And it's passive because once you make a video, you put it out there, it keeps getting more views, more money, more passive income. If you stop completely and you have a bunch of videos there, you still get paid more money. Obviously, it drops because there's less content there, but it continues to make you more money and more money and more money. YouTube is an amazing source of income, if you ask me. Now, number four is going to be affiliate marketing. This basically means you grab somebody else's product, you try to sell it for them, whether it's physically or, for example, online, and that's how you make some money. Now, you have, for example, Amazon affiliates and other sources out there, but just Google affiliate marketing, best products to actually go ahead and sell and websites, and you will come up with a bunch of different resources. I'm not giving you all the details, basically, it's a video. I don't wanna be here for an hour because it gets very boring, right? So I wanna give you the idea Tell you how to find all the information so then you can go ahead and basically get started fully. But my advice would be pick a product that interests you. If I were to start this today, I would pick something within the fitness industry because that is what interests me. Or if it's clothing for you, or if it's books for you, or if it's Amazon products, or if you don't care and you just, just want to make some money, it's really up to you. But usually, selling something that you love and you care about is usually gonna make you more money because you become more passionate when you talk to somebody else about it. It's pretty obvious, common sense, honestly. Now, number five is gonna be arbitrage. You know, kinda like, for example, like the four hour work week is a great book where this guy had an entire business where he, I think he made like a, like a, like a thinking pill or something like that, or a thinking powder. You drank the powder, it made you more alert or whatever. But arbitrage is basically, when you find a business in a sense, you can actually buy it and manufacture it, put a label on it, now it's your company, and you have your own website and you sell it on there. But in reality, you're, you don't really have any inventory, you don't really have any product, all you have is a website with supply. When people buy, you grab that order, you send it over there, and those people go ahead and ship it over to your customer. That is awesome. Arbitrage businesses are usually amazing because you kind of become the middleman, and all you really do is just manage things. And if you hire somebody to manage it for you, well, guess what? Now it is fully passive, but it does take work to build up, for example, a brand. And by the way, this is called white labeling. Along with arbitrage business, do the research, and you will find more information on it. But if it sounds interesting, it's because it basically is. Website, somebody else's product, and guess who does this too? Wayfair does this, which is like a massive company, but that's what they basically do, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Now, on top of that, we have number six, write a book. 
I know you're not a genius, neither am I, or maybe you are a genius. I'm just not a genius, I'll just be honest with you. But if you have a topic that you're very interested in and you know a lot about, writing a book doesn't mean writing the next Harry Potter, okay? Doesn't mean that, or writing one of those long butt books I have back there. It just means if I did this, I would be like, hey, maybe I wanna write a book about budgets or about investing, or for example, about getting fit or about running, things that interest me. And you kind of create this book and you're able to publish it on Amazon for free, by the way, it doesn't cost you any money. They do the printing for you also if you actually want it to be so. And then you kind of just go into detail. You just create, for example, like a PDF, and you start going ahead and selling that. $10 from one effort is amazing forever. You make one book one time, takes you maybe a few hours or a lot of hours, depends on what you're writing, right? And then you can just keep making more and more and more money. Now, obviously, have proper expectations. You know, you're not, you're probably not writing the next Harry Potter, but if your book is actually very interesting, making a few sales per month and then building up on that is also a success, okay? That's my advice on that right there. Number seven is selling a course. A lot of people think that in order to make a course, I have my own course, by the way. It took me a few months to actually make it. It takes a lot, it takes a lot of work, honestly. Um, but if you have an expertise, whether it's cooking, whether it's finance, whether it's fitness, whatever your expertise is and people are interested in paying money to solve that problem or to scratch that itch if you make that product if you teach that in a course a digital program you spend that time that one time and then you're able to keep making more and more money by obviously becoming a source of reputable information in the space that you're actually interested in. So you can't just be like, oh, my name is Deborah. I've never done anything in the cooking world, but I'm gonna make this course and please buy. No, you become a reputable source of information within the cooking whole thing. And then you basically start marketing and marketing and marketing and you start to get sales for your entire course. That is the idea. Where do you sell it? You can sell it, for example, I'm selling mines on Teachable, but there are other places to go ahead and sell your course. Whatever question you have, comment down below. Someone will answer it, including me, but also write it down and Google it. Google has all the answers possible, and this way you don't have to wait on anybody to answer your questions, because I hated waiting when I was so interested and pumped to get the answers right away. Now, number eight is Amazon FBA. Now, this is basically, you have an Amazon account, you start selling products there, and you find products that are basically very successful, and you start selling it to other people. You send the products directly, for example, to Amazon to do all the shipping, handle everything for you, or you could also go ahead and say, well, I'm gonna find um, clearance products on, for example, Marshalls or Walmart, and I'm gonna grab those products and then sell them over on Amazon for retail price, and then also make a profit. I have a friend, her name is Jasmine Bautista. She is on YouTube and TikTok, Finder, Jasmine Bautista. She makes a lot of videos about Amazon FBA and she makes a lot of money on this stuff. My point is, there's always someone out there that knows more than you. Study them, find out what they know. And then it's kind of like, if I do what you do that made you successful and I get a lot better and I add my own flair to it, why won't I be successful? That's the way I always saw things. So Jasmine Bautista, a great resource if you want to do Amazon FBA. Now, number nine is starting up a barbershop. Now, again, this might not seem passive because you're saying, Tommy, barbershop equals me being in a shop, cutting hair, nothing about that is passive. No, barbershop equals you having a location, having barbers and chairs and merchandise there, and then you go in there and collecting rent from those barbers or collecting a percentage of whatever their sales actually were. That's a passive way to actually get it done. I have a friend, he does this. He's, he's so smart and so amazing. I look up to this guy so much, and he has two barbershops now. He barely ever cuts any hair at all. He has the barbershops with like 12 to 14 barbershops, that's one and the other one has a salon plus a barbershop area plus a bottom, the guy is super smart, and he basically just rents out a space, like a chair to those people, like I think it's like a 200 a week or 150 a week, and every week he just basically goes, collects the rent from them, and then he's like, okay, whatever you made, you made, I really don't care. He pays the rent, pays all the stuff, keeps the profit for himself. To me, this guy is a genius, but it did take him time, and he did it because he was interested in being a barber, and that was his entire 
passion or devotion. So obviously, you got to be interested in this stuff also. Then you also have number 10, job arbitrage. Now, this gets complicated, but it's fairly simple. You know how you have people in other countries that are willing to do jobs for less money than they're actually worth, for example, in the U.S.? Like, they're willing to get paid a dollar or three dollars or four dollars, but where they live, that's actually a good wage. Now, meaning, for example, if you find a person that needs a job to be done, for example, on Upwork or on Fiverr or any of these job market websites, and then you find, for example, somebody else on another website that's willing to do that work for less money than they're actually willing to pay, well, you get hired and you hire the other person and you have them do the work, you submit it to the actual person that needs the work and then you keep the difference. Meaning for example, hey Tommy, I'll pay you $20 an hour to do this job for me. Well, I just found Matthew, which lives in, for example, the Philippines, he's willing to take $5 an hour. Meaning he's gonna do the work, but I'm gonna get paid a $15 difference after I'm done basically paying Matthew to do his job. You still get your work done, but I also make money. And you basically did nothing. You just connected two people and that is basically it. To me, that is amazing, okay? It's a great little side hustle. And I got that idea when I used to work for a company in the US doing data entry and I found out that they actually got a part of my wage just by finding me the job. And I was like, what the, you know what I'm saying? And to even hire me full time, they would have had to buy my contract out from that company, which is crazy. And I was like, this is so amazing but I hate them so much, okay? Yeah, that's a true story there. Now, number 11 is Airbnb arbitrage. Now, most people think that, well, to have an Airbnb business, obviously, I need to buy a rental property. Well, that's not true. I need to own a property. That's not true. You can always just basically lease a property long-term, like, for example, yearly or two years or three years or five years, depending on how you actually want to get it done. You set it up for Airbnb and you rent it out on Airbnb. So instead of saying, I want to buy a rental property, $100,000. No, I'm just going to rent one out. Okay. I'm just going to rent out a property and then put it on Airbnb. Of course, of course, with the permission of the landlord. Don't be an idiot and then go in there and then rent it out. Landlord gets, you know, mad and then throws you out because that's not a part of the lease and it's supposed to be your residency, right? So just make sure everything is spoken and everything is in order. But it's a great way to make some money from Airbnb without having to buy a crazy rental property. All right. By the way, a lot of people, they're going all in on Airbnb. You know what happens when a market gets saturated? The money that you actually make goes down. And then when you have so much growth happen and people spend so much money, the growth percentage to like, um, earn capital basically goes down. So it's kind of like you put more money in, but by doing that, you basically are making the same amount of money. So growth doesn't equal anything. Be very careful. Put in all your eggs into just one basket, especially with Turo. That's another idea where you basically rent out cars and you're like, okay, I'm going to buy this car, buy that car, or finance these cars and rent it out on Turo and make some income by doing that. I knew a math teacher in New Jersey that did that and he was making a good amount of money. But when there are a lot of cars and everybody's doing the same thing, the amount of money you actually make is going to go down. And if you have a bunch of debt that's collateralized by all those things, well, if things go wrong, you will be in trouble. So take things easy. That's another idea right there. It's a bonus. So enjoy that one too. Now, number 12 is going to be rental property. Obviously, again, this one takes a little while to actually get into because you can either do it by basically financing, putting down 20% to actually get this property or by just buying in cash and saving up for a very long time. But once you buy this property, usually distressed properties that basically need some repairs, you buy them for a cheap amount of money, you put in some elbow grease and obviously a contract to actually help you out remodel the property and then you go ahead you refinance you get your money and then you go ahead and you rent it out for the long term now the way i'm gonna do it which is gonna be later this year or early next year is i'm gonna buy a property i'm gonna pay cash for it and i'm gonna use that money i make from it to actually just get the money all right pretty simple stuff now i have a friend he actually specializes in buying like little apartments, like studios, one bedrooms or two bedrooms, and he rents it out and he makes some money like that too, which is awesome. He pays $17,000 for a one bedroom apartment here in Puerto Rico, and it makes him $350 every single month, and that's not bad. There is no maintenance. There is obviously, for example, like something breaks or you need to repair or whatever, remodel, that's separate, okay? But to me, that's also a great deal. You don't have to shoot for a lot of money properties or expensive properties 
there are other properties out there that can make you a good amount of money too. Now, number 13 is going to be stock investing. This includes, for example, dividends, ETFs, or for example, also REITs, which stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. That means if you don't have money to invest into real estate, you can put money into a REIT and basically invest into real estate via the stock market and with the entire crowd because everybody else is putting money into it. Now, obviously, this takes a long time to actually build up. The way I do it is with ETFs. If you want to copy my portfolio and my investment strategy, I have a link down below to M1 Finance, and it shows you exactly what I put my money into. Right now, it makes me 2% in dividends, and the entire growth rate based on history is around 8 to 12%. So that means I'm making a good amount of money every single year in return on, over the long term. I'm also making 2%. And when you average it out, it's mostly like around like 11% on your money, which is great. But it builds up over time. It's a long-term thing. It's not short-term whatsoever, like a vending machine business makes you money tomorrow. No, it takes a very long time. But that's a part of the game, and I'm willing to play. You got to know what you're willing to play, okay? That's my advice there. Um, number 14 is becoming a personal trainer or having and selling an expertise, okay? Now, you might say, Tommy, well, you're wrong here because personal trainer is not passive, is actually active. The truth is, it can be both. Because picture, for example, if you are a personal trainer, so obviously you need to have the physique, the body, or whatever the expertise actually is, but if you create, for example, a PDF program for somebody along with a workout program, are you really having to work out with them or do any real work? No, you're just selling, for example, meal plans, you're sending them, for example, workout programs, and eventually you can kind of create a kind of template for everyone else, but a great coach usually will make an individual template for an individual person, but then that costs more money for them, which also makes you more money overall. You can actually make something that seems active into passive. It just depends how you play around with the ideas, okay? That's why I offered this one right here. Now, number 15, we are getting close to the end. So I want you to comment down below, idea, to make sure that I know that you made it all the way to the end of this video. Comment down below, idea. Now, number 15 is basically becoming a marketing expert for businesses out there that need social media presence. Now, this means, for example, if you know a business, right? Your favorite restaurant, your favorite taco shop, whatever it is. And you know, they basically need is social media presence. They're not on Google maps. They're not even, for example, on Instagram, social media. Then you can go in there and say, Hey, I want to help you guys out. Have a social media presence. I want to help you guys out, promote ads to actually get you customers and do coupons. But obviously it's not just you saying, I know how to get a few followers. They don't care about followers. They care about customers because customers mean money. Followers don't mean anything, okay? So it means you have to become very efficient in understanding how ads actually work, how to promote, and this takes a certain level of education, which obviously you build up over time and it can become passive by you basically building out templates and so on once you have the actual knowledge. Now, number 16, and by the way, here's a clap, just one. For making it to the end of this amazing video of 16 which by the way i enjoyed a lot making the last one is actually peer-to-peer -peer lending you can do this basically by doing lending club or for example a website like prosper these are two websites by the way that allow you to lend money to other people but everything in the world has risk some people might default people might not default you can expect anywhere from 10 to 15 percent return on capital or a profit on it okay or interest on it and it's pretty fine okay but the main thing is if you want to make more you're gonna take more risk if you want to take less risk you're gonna be making less money I mean that's just common sense it's just how everything basically works okay but the idea is you have 16 ideas to get started with 16 different things now the number one thing I would do is blank out right now forget about everything I said whatever the first idea that comes to your mind is just try that one out first. Give it, for example, I usually say like 18 months because I'm kind of crazy to try it out, develop it, see what works, learn the most about it, and try to be successful in it. And then you give it a try. Some people will watch this video, try three ideas at once, and fail dramatically. Some people might try one idea after one week and no money. This doesn't work. My point is give something a fair try, do it correctly and see how it works. I've never started a business where I didn't make money. Drop shipping, I had around $20,000 in sale. Um, selling phones, I made money there too. Um, Goodwill, I made money there too. 
um, peer to peer lending, I made money there too. There's always money to be made somewhere, but you got to get time, enough time to actually make whatever you need to make work. It's just how things work, okay? It's just, it's just how things work. It's just how things work. I have no vocabulary after this video, okay? Thanks for watching, guys. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified. Comment down below any questions. Up here is another video on businesses. And over here is my face. Click on subscribe. Thanks for watching. Long term team officially out. Follow me on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. And peace out. I'm sweating. There's no AC in this room. That's how much I love you guys, okay? Peace.